Williams, Eli Manning joining us, two-time Super Bowl champ and, of course, co-host of the Manning Cast, joining us on behalf of Quaker, the official oatmeal sponsor of the NFL. And uh, Eli will tell you what he's doing with uh, Quaker coming up here. Good to see you again. What's your big takeaway? Let's start with the Eagles and the 49ers. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Uh, obviously, the Eagles are playing great football. That, that pains me to, to say a little bit, but they, uh, they're playing great defense. And their offense, uh, like they've done all year, they, they just do a good job taking care of the football and being able to run the football and, and have Jalen Hurts doing these RPOs and getting the ball out quickly. He's not taking chances. It's safe, safe throws, safe completions. And so it's pretty good complimentary team football that they're able to, um, you know, to play. And they've done it the last two weeks. Obviously, it's unfortunate for the 49ers losing their, their starting quarterback. And, they've, you know, they've, they've dealt with that. Twice already this year, it's hard to, to, to lose your third string stringer and, and come back and then lose your fourth stringer. And so it's unfortunate they didn't have kind of all their firepower in action and, and do that. But Philadelphia is playing great football. OK, as a quarterback, you're looking at who's going to put pressure on you. Like Hassan Reddick is un- unbelievable. Now, when you go to the line of scrimmage, how often would you change your blocking assignments or have somebody help out because you know where he is? How often would that happen uh, in your career? Yeah, I mean, I think it's you, you definitely have to know where their best rushers are. And, you know, hey, sometimes your, your tackle's got to be the guy that blocks them or sometimes you do play action where you have a tight end has to block them sometimes, but you don't want those one-on-one matches uh, matchups all day long. You want to try to keep a, a chip by a tight end or keep a back over there to – to chip him and just slow him down so he's not in a sprinter stance and, and firing off the ball. Uh, so I think it's just that that combination of, of having multiple uh, multiple ways to show different diff, you know different looks at him, line up you know lining up guys over him. So you will change things up um, if you know depending on where he is. Try to get the offensive line to slide you know to his side so you can try to get a double team as much as possible. I know that we love the big plays, you know, Mahomes, explosive, all of that. The Eagles are methodical. You you were fortunate. You had a, a good running game. And I wonder, you know, what's what's more devastating to a defense when you get those big plays, explosive plays, or we're just going to keep running the football at you? I think it's when you, yeah, when you can run the football at them because it's, it's, there's nothing you can do to stop it. And that, and that could be a frustrating thing when you're loading the box and you're just getting pushed around and you're getting moved around. And, and what it does also, it, it slows down the pass rush. All of a sudden, those defensive ends are tired. They're playing the run. Those defensive tackles are, are tired. They're not just doing all their spin moves. They're trying to fit gaps and they're worried about stopping the run. And so it opens up the play action. It slows the pass rush down so you can get, you know, more completion. So it, it just, when you can run the football, it kind of helps everything else work better as well. And so the Eagles are doing it really well. And, and whether it's, you know, one of their you know three running backs they have or Jalen Hurts running it, uh, they have a lot of different ways to keep the ball uh, just kind of on the ground. And, not, you know, you're not, you're not dealing with tip passes. You're not dealing with sacks. You're not dealing with interceptions. And so you take a lot of the bad plays out of the game and you can just control the clock. You can shorten the game and keep their offense on the sideline for a long time, which which is frustrating as well. Mahomes on a bad ankle. I don't know. You didn't rely on your legs, but playing with a high ankle sprain, uh, what did you expect out of Mahomes? Well, I thought he, I thought he played uh, really, really well and made some, some really uh, impressive throws moving around in the pocket and still, you know, running up and making off balance throws off a bad ankle uh, is not, is not easy. And, 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 and he made some, some really spectacular throws. I think he did miss a few kind of some of the easier throws because of it. And just, you're a little bit off and pushing off of it on sign on times. And I think sometimes when you are, you're on the run and you're moving, you're not thinking as much and you're reacting. And he made some of those really good throws. But when you're kind of sitting in the pocket and and things are a little bit easier, you think about it a little bit more. And he, he just missed a couple of crossing routes uh, that he normally does not. But, you know, he, he, he just competed. And obviously the, the last play of the game or for the offense when they uh, you know, were able to run, get the first down, get the late hit on the sideline to put it in field goal. Um, you know, position was obviously a huge play in the game. You know your longest run from scrimmage? Uh, what, 18, 18 yards, maybe? 
Three different like times. Three different times. Three, 18 years. lucky number. Yeah. There you go. And Peyton's lucky number, too. <laughs> Although Peyton's longest was 33. Yeah, I saw it. It took, it took a minute <laughs> and a half, though. He's still yeah. running. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. He's he almost got to delay the game, delay the game <laughs> during the play. They call it a penalty. <laughs> How did you, through your career, you were very careful about what you gave the media. You didn't give, there was no bulletin board material. But then how often did you really want to say what you felt about something or somebody? That's, yeah, you, you do that in the quarterback room. Afterwards, you know, you, you kind of, you, you got to like laugh about it and be able to uh, kind of, with, with your quarterbacks or your quarterback coach, say, hey, you know, this is what this guy asked me. This is what I really wanted to say. And I couldn't say it. So at least you get it off your chest. You get it out there and then, you know, all right, I got, I got that done. I'm not holding it in just forever. And then one day it's just all going to spill out and I'm just going to have a freak out on the media. So I was always trying to avoid that. But I think you, you always want to be, uh, you know, kind of tell the truth and be honest and give some information. But you, you don't always have to tell exactly uh, what, what you're feeling. Give us uh, an idea what the Pro Bowl is going to be all about with you and you and Peyton. Yeah, uh, excited. A little flag football uh, Pro Bowl this year. So a new uh, a, a new way of playing it. And, it, you know, I think the, the game had gotten, you know, a little bad and, and there was not much tackling anyway. So we, we said, hey, let's just eliminate the tackling. We'll play flag. Let's get some of these great athletes, get, get them the ball in space. And, and let them make some phenomenal plays. And, you know, uh, you know, Justin Jefferson and Tyreek Hill, like get them the ball, let them, let the quarterbacks throw it. We don't need a pass rush and, and let them play a little seven on seven. Uh, I expect it to be a lot of scoring, uh, high, 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 high paced, uh, high action. And so uh, I expect the NFC to win, you know, Peyton say uh, he's a terrible coach. We all know that uh, good player, bad coach. So I think we're at a major <laughs> advantage. Uh, Tony Dungy said that Peyton would make a terrible coach because he would be, he, he was so, but even an analyst, he said, he'll drive you crazy. Yes, I agree. Uh, he drives me crazy, <laughs> uh, you know, trying to analyze film with him and, and the amount of, uh, you know, voice memos, he, he leaves me and, and everything going on. So I keep asking for the cliff notes of the of the memo. Uh, if you could send me that, it'd be a lot easier on me and save me a lot of time. But I think, I, I think with, with Peyton, you know, he was so good at, at seeing the plays and picking the perfect play and then running it and then, and then, and then running it well and, and executing it. I think if, if, you know, if from the sideline, if he wouldn't be able to do all those things. He might be able to get to some good plays, but then if they don't execute it, <laughs> I think it'd be frustrating to him. I think it'd just be a very, frustrating experience for him and I think that would come across to the players and that's what I'm hoping happens uh this Sunday at the Pro Bowl as well uh we had Tom Brady on a couple of months ago and I said you know how long would it take for you to get your Super Bowl rings he, he said it would take him a couple of minutes to to find his uh, Super Bowl rings well he has a lot of them though but right, he does have a lot, a lot how, how long would it take you to find your Super Bowl rings uh, I mean, I know where they are to go physically get them and be back and go get them and be back in this chair in in a minute, a minute. Last don't, time you I wore, I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> don't challenge me. Uh, last, last time I wore, I don't wear, I don't wear them much. Uh, they're so, they're so big and, cl and clunky. It's like, it's not comfortable to wear in, like it hurts your fingers afterwards. I, I remember with the first with the first championship, we're 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 designing the ring, and we kind of talked about it a little bit, saying, "Hey, wouldn't it be you know kind of maybe a good idea if we got a Super Bowl ring and didn't make it like the biggest thing in the world where we could actually could wear it, and it wouldn't be like this obnoxious like bling thing out that like we're never gonna wear." And we're kind of talking about it and we're designing it. And we're going through it. And then Michael Strahan shows up 45 minutes late. Like we had it designed, like ready to go. And he's like, only thing I care about is I want a 10 table ring. And everybody's like, what, what's a 10 table ring? He goes, when I walk into a restaurant, I want you to be able to see this thing from 10 <laughs> tables away. And I was like, all right. And we had to restart the whole, the whole deal. And we got the big giant. Why you know, not just Bowl. a class ring? How about you get a Super Bowl ring and maybe a, like a, a class, a wearable class ring? 
it's not a bad idea. I think you, I think we need to go to the double ring, kind yeah. of a wearable one, and yeah. then you have like the trophy case one. Yes. Uh, tell us what you're doing with Quaker. Yeah, excited to partner with Quaker and invite fans to share how they pre-grain before the big game for a chance to win uh, tickets and to attend the Super Bowl for next year. So uh, mm. to enter the contest, you can go to TikTok, you can follow Quaker. And between now, today, and February 12th, you got to upload your own pre grain video of how you're using Quaker Oats to prepare for the game using uh, the caption, hashtag Quaker pre grain hashtag entry. <laughs> so upload your video, how you're using Quaker Oats, and you got a chance to go to the Super Bowl next year. Are you in a Super Bowl commercial this year? Uh, no. Oh, Not. what's going on? Uh, yeah, it, just, it, is know, Peyton and is Peyton involved in one? I, I, there's always a bet, like the over under on Peyton on how many Super Bowl commercials he's in. I don't know what the number. I don't know what the official <laughs> bet is. But he is I'm in. Sure. Is he in at I least one? Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm not positive. I think we have. You know, we've had some kind of through the playoffs leading up to the. To, you know, kind of leading up to the Super Bowl, but. Um, you know, we got to, you got to, you know, you never know. You could, we got time. Uh, Dan, I got two weeks. I got two weeks. Maybe I, can, I can, I can sneak in one. Uh, good to talk to you. Good luck with the campaign there. Always good to talk to you. Thank you, Eli. Always, Dan. Thanks so much. That's Eli Manning.